It's time for the verdict. The verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. It's time for the verdict. And welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and I am joined, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. Kent, what do we have today? Well, today, Mick, we're going to readdress the subject of the state chamber in Oklahoma. It's the Chamber of Commerce, if you will. It covers the entire state. And we have, in the past, had Dick Rush, who's kind of the uh, full-time exec out there, on to talk about the state chamber. But today, we've got a special treat. We've got the chairman of the state chamber for 2004. Judy Hatfield is going to be joining us. And she's going to be talking about what the state chamber does, what their goals are. And she's going to tell our viewers just exactly uh, if they are members, what, the, what their dues pay for and what kind of activities the state chamber tries to uh, get involved in and what kind of uh, uh, results they hope to achieve this year. Sounds like we'll learn a lot. This morning, a visit with the chairman of the state chamber, Judy Hatfield. It's next on The Verdict. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce today's guest. We are really pleased today to have Judy Hatfield, the state chamber uh, chairman for 2004, joining us. Uh, Judy is a, an OU graduate in finance with a business degree. She's a small business owner. She is a certified public accountant. She's in the real estate business in Norman. She's a longtime Norman resident, but originally a native of Pauls Valley, Oklahoma. And this is her first visit on The Verdict, but I hope not her last. Judy, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Well, I was really uh, astounded at looking at your resume, quite frankly, even as pared down as it was. Uh, the number of new things you do. You seem to reinvent yourself every decade. And I want to uh, call up a graphic now to let our viewers see uh, what I'm talking about, because we've called it a different hat in every decade. Uh, Judy, in the 70s, graduated from the University of Oklahoma. Uh, in the 1980s, she became a CPA. In the 1990s, she obtained her CCIM designation, which deals with uh, the Real Estate National Association of Realtors. And in the 2000s, she's starting off 2004 as state chamber chairman. It seems to me like about every 10 years, you, you put on a new hat. So. Uh, why is it you, that you do that? You know, the only uh, answer I can really give you on that is I love change. I'm not afraid of change. I love to take risks. And you kind of brought this to my attention. I hadn't really thought about it. And then you start to look through and you're going, you know, I don't know if it's that I got bored, you know, so what's the next thing? But I do love change, you know, so that's probably a major reason. Judy, we've got several issues I know you, we'd, we'd like to ask you about and I'm sure you'd like to discuss. But let's, let's start with number one. What's the number one priority of the state chamber this year? Well, really, um, I would love to say that there's just one. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we just want one. Let's start with one. <laughs> well, the, the one that's probably on the top, top of my radar screen is actually workers' comp reform. Okay. Um, as a small business owner, uh, obviously, that really plays into uh, the bottom line, so to speak. And even in my company, as small as it is, workers' comp expense for my employees is 10% of their annual salary. And when you look at that as an expense overall, that's that much less I can put into retirement funds for them. And when you look overall at, at how it affects our state as a whole, we tend to have the 10th most expensive workers' comp rates in the nation and the 15th from the bottom uh, amount of benefits for, for the workers. 
So we've got a, a definite imbalance there. And although we've made major workers' comp reform through the years, and I know the Mary, Mary Fallon uh, really led one about three years ago, and we thought, okay, we've made some good. But it continues to change. And when the states around you and around the nation are continuing to make uh, reform changes, you've got to, too, to keep up. And Let, we've got to do that. I'm sorry. Let's put some meat on those bones. We've had uh, a number of guests on over the years that have said that it's now getting to years, uh, <laughs> who, who have said that workers' comp reform was a priority. Uh, what specifically uh, would you like to change from what we do now? I, I know you want the cost to go down and the benefits to go up, but how do you get there specifically? Well, it sounds, you know, okay, good. If that's all you want, then it should be fairly easy to do. But we've actually put together, um, uh, and, and this was adopted by our board of directors on December 8th, bullet points to try to say here are the avenues that we want to try to improve so that we can accomplish that and then keep it improving uh, in the future. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to use mediation probably for some of, some of the more simple kinds of claims. Instead of court trials. Instead of court trials. And we all know that our court system is, is backed up anyway. And the amount of time that it takes to, to make that happen while you've got an employee there waiting for their benefit or whatever, it can, can really be detrimental and very costly for us as, as citizens and the cost of our, of our government as a result. Uh, we'd like to... Um, be able to support legislation that would prohibit the payment of lump sums uh, in cases of permanent partial soft tissue injuries. And you know, I really kind of get into that controversial arena there because I have lots of friends that are attorneys and certainly I'm not saying that attorneys aren't worth their money because they are, but those are the kinds of things that we've got to address to get that back into wraps so that we can expand our business base. Well, you're not talking about paying less for those injuries. You're talking about paying uh, not in a lump sum, but over a period of time. Is and, that, is or, that or, the basic Or really change? trying to look at the, the whole soft tissue injury uh, award structure um, is so difficult to define. And uh, I think it's an, an area that is very, very costly. And we've got to look at that and see how we can put it more into what is the real cost? Let's get that handled and let's get the majority of those benefits back in the pockets of that employer or, or that, that person that, that had the in injury. What are your chances of getting something accomplished this session? Um, uh, what a great question. Uh, I'm a big, I'm a big can-do kind of person and I think that if you don't fight the fight, then you don't get results. And so I don't really look at it as, well, you know, it's really going to be a tough road. Well, yeah, what isn't it's worth having? So I think that we sit down, we say, here are the things that we want. We put that on the table, we negotiate, and we do the best we can. One of the things you have to do is you have to inform people, just like your show. I mean, getting the word out to folks as to what's going on is, is tremendous. And we need to do more of that. We need to get more of our small businesses, as well as our large businesses, involved in the process. Now, besides workers' comp reform, you must have other goals. I know lawsuit reform is one. Some people might think of that as tort reform, but we're calling it lawsuit reform. Uh, yes. What do you have in mind there? Well, the issue of lawsuit reform is uh, we, we actually did a survey to go out and kind of find out what do Oklahomans feel about lawsuit reform, you know, and, and one of the biggest things that came back was that 80 percent of the people that were in a poll that was done by an outside objective party said that there's too many lawsuits going on in Oklahoma. It's so easy for us, and you even hear this in, in our kids kidding, going, well, I'll just sue you over that. We don't need that mentality. We need to look at ways to work out differences before we again have to take them to a court system. Uh, and so I think that too many times we get involved in frivolous lawsuits. I've been involved in them myself. They're very costly. And one of the biggest costs is my time. You know, particularly as a small business person, when you're the rainmaker, if the majority of your time is spent going after somebody that's really angry at you instead of really wanting to sue you over something that you should be sued over, you spend a lot of time doing that instead of generating uh, income for the company and hiring new employees as you generate more income. Let me jump in here and get us to our first break. It's Judy Hatfield. She is the chair of the state chamber. We'll be right back.
Vic Cornett and Kent Myers back on the verdict. This week's guest is Judy Hatfield. She's the chair of the state chamber. Kent, where are we going to go now? Well, I wanted to ask Judy about something that was in uh, some of the material the state chamber gave me. It was uh, an alleged quote by you that uh, says, the legislature is a moving target and that's good. I was kind of curious about what you meant by that. You know, it, it kind of goes back to one of the things I talked about earlier about change. Uh, in the legislature now, particularly with term limits, we're going to see some changes there, and, and I think that that's good. I, I think stagnation can be a problem. Uh, we have to address uh, change in our state, because if we keep doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep getting what we've been getting. And so I see that as a positive for our state, as you know, the kinds of things that we can do with the legislature changing, and, and whether it's Democrat or Republican, the important thing is that we're changing and making positive improvements. So that's what I meant by that. Another quote attributed to you. David Boren is the number one economic development tool in the state. What do you mean by that? Well, at the time, you know, making, making that quote didn't know that it was going to, you know, be such a big deal, and I've gotten several comments about that, but, but I believe that David Boren, uh, you know, of course, he's from an Oklahoma family, wonderful uh, roots in Oklahoma, but having been governor, having been a senator, then coming into OU and being uh, the president of, of one of our major universities in the state, the things that he has accomplished by having a vision and not saying, no, we can't do that because we've never done that before, but going in, you know, you look at what has happened with the University of Oklahoma, and now we've got David Smithley at OSU, and I expect that we're going to see major wonderful things uh, there too and coalitions being built. But David has brought in more... Um, donations of, of money from folks that have caused us to be able to build buildings to enhance libraries and um, uh, the College of Business now is expanding almost double the size. The, he spent, he's been able to spend uh, almost seven hundred million dollars in projects since he got there. And look at what that does. It, it creates jobs, you know, it creates income for our state. It allows us to have a, a better base for our students. Then, because of his international influence, he's able to bring in uh, all kinds of wonderful global folks that we get to be associated with and meet with that can be very beneficial to our business base. And then additionally, as you just look at the whole David Boren way that he does business, he's very community-minded. And uh, through his leadership, a coalition was put together in Norman that is business, university, and city as a coalition to provide economic development. And I think that that's been just a tremendous thing. The big vision that was very costly that we all wondered, how are we going to pull this off, has been the emphasis on the National Weather uh, Center. And that National Weather Center, which I fully expect someday to be the International Weather Center, has created numerous jobs in, uh, in Oklahoma, Norman and Periphery. And those kinds of economic visions zero in on areas that we have expertise so that they can blossom into uh, the research and development kinds of things for the future that are going to be where we go, I think, as a state. So. Uh, let's get back to the state chamber for a moment. We know you do some lobbying down at the state capitol yes. as a group. Yes. What else does the state chamber do? Well, the state chamber really provides uh, access and influence uh, through being a cohesive group of business people. And it, when you look at our initiatives that we have in our strategic plan, there's really not an area that we don't touch. It's critical that we uh, keep it simple for business so that business can expand within our state. So when you go, go through the kinds of things that, that you need to accomplish that, I mean, it's economic development. It's, it's watching the laws so that we don't get overtaxed, so that we choke business. Uh, when you get into health issues, we just had a huge meeting yesterday with the major uh, educators of our state to see the kinds of things that education and business can do together so that we can get uh, appropriate funding through business expansion uh, to help our education system. So it's almost like, what do we not touch? And, and that's great. Let me ask you a question that a, a small business owner might ask themselves. Let's just take a hypothetical situation of a small business owner in, in uh, South Oklahoma City in Capitol Hill. That small business owner may be a member of the South Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce, may be also a member of the Oklahoma City or greater Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. What would you tell that owner about why they also ought to be a member of the state chamber? 
Well, I'm a big believer in involvement, and I'll, I'll give you just a real quick uh, answer. About 10 years ago when I got involved with the state chamber, I too was a member of three different chambers. Mm -hmm. And um, the difference in what the state chamber does than our local chambers is we lobby. We provide the voice, we provide the access and the influence for business at the legislature. And that's a major difference in what our local chambers do. And that's what I see as a difference. That small business person needs to have that access and influence to assist their business. Well, looking back, uh, let's take this to the end of the year and, and uh, look backwards. What do you hope will be the most satisfying accomplishment that the state chamber can make this year? I'm a relationship person. And I think that one of the most important things that we can do with business is build relationships with our legislators, build relationships with the state chamber and the legislature, and that we can go back and look at the positive steps that were accomplished through workers' comp reform, lawsuit reform, taxation issues that we have to be careful of, and certainly not reducing any of the incentives that we have for our business, and that we can measure steps in each one of those areas to say, we made progress. I bet we have a lot of small business owners watching our show this morning. What's your message to them? Get involved. Uh, I'm a firm believer in get involved. Uh, you know, we can all come up with a million reasons why we can't, but let's look at why we can. Let's take one area that you're passionate about and get involved. Call me on my cell phone. I'll help. You know, I'm happy to do that because as an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, third generation Oklahoma entrepreneur. I love to say that. And because of that, you know, you look at all the opportunities that small business can have, but they never have enough time. Mm -hmm. So let the state chamber assist them through involvement, and, and that's how, how we can help them be involved. Well, after your, uh, I realize we're in the early part of 2004, you've just been in, in office about a couple of weeks now. Uh, after this is uh, over, what's next for Judy Hatfield? You know, I'm, once again, I said I love change, uh, but I'm an entrepreneur at heart, and I'm very involved uh, with the University of Oklahoma in uh, entrepreneurial programs for mentoring. Um, I love to help. Well, you've hired a bunch of interns, have you not, I over have the years? over a hundred. Um, as I look back, which was amazing when I started counting them up, and lots of them are very successful today. I like to claim some of that was had to do with me, but actually it had to do with them. But but I want to be able to help entrepreneurs. I want to keep our our best and brightest in the state. I want to help them see that. Don't have anything to do? Let's create. A, let's create something. Here's a niche that needs some activity. Let's create a job. Let's stay here. Let's grow our own within the state to increase our business base. You know, we we're wildcatters. That's what Oklahoma did in the very beginning. We took risks. We, we had change. And we created a wonderful uh, state of entrepreneurs. Let's keep that going. Judy Hatfield, thank you for coming on The My Verdict. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Really enjoyed We appreciate it. it. Thank you. Kent and I'll be back with a few final words in a moment. You're watching The Verdict. We are back to wrap up another edition of The Verdict. This week's show was with Judy Hatfield. Yeah, Judy Hatfield is a very impressive uh, business person that's going to do a grand job as chairman of the uh, state chamber. Uh, they have a, uh, a really an important mission if you're a business or business oriented uh, or a business owner. Uh, they uh, have an enormous impact at the state legislature and with that kind of leadership I would not be surprised to see some very uh, positive results for economic development. Uh, let me change the subject just okay. a little bit. Uh, let our viewers know in the next uh, few weeks, uh, we're going to see a, a little bit different show because all oh, the mug you're looking at now is all you're going to get to see <laughs> uh, because uh, my partner, co-host here, Mick Cornett, is going to take a, uh, a leave of absence for a few weeks to uh, campaign and run for mayor of the city of Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. We're going to miss you and we're going to welcome you back no matter how that turns out, we're going to be glad to have you back in a few weeks. Well, I appreciate that, Ken. It's February 24th, so it will be a span of a few weeks. But as you know, it's something I've been looking forward to, to doing and, 
and uh, something I feel like I'm ready for. Um, and don't want to turn this into a campaign speech, but I appreciate you uh, stepping in and handling the reins by yourself and uh, look forward to returning. Well, we'll see if the reins are handled or if they're dropped in front of the wagon and the horses run amok. But uh, we're going to do our best uh, in your absence. And I might just say, uh, finally, uh, for next week's show, uh, one of the first shows I'll do by myself. We're going to have a show about an Oklahoma movie, a movie on cockfighting starring Wilford Brimley and uh, Rex Lynn and others. We're going to have the producer and the uh, writer of the screenplay for that on us on our show and we're going to preview a little bit of it and talk about mm -hmm. a movie about cockfighting. All right. And in the meantime, if people would like to go to the website, theverdict.tv. Thanks again to our guest, Judy Hatfield. She's the chair of the state chamber. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett on The Verdict.